In this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can set up our tracking codes correctly inside of Google Tag Manager. So it enables us to do Google Ads dynamic remarketing on our Google Ads campaigns. All the more, coming up. <laughs> All right, today we start out in our demo shop here. This is this time based on a Shopify store where we want to install dynamic remarketing tags. So we'll be able to do dynamic remarketing inside of Google Ads. Now it's important to understand that there are different moving pieces to a setup like this. And the most important part is that there are two things that need to be in place in order for this to work correctly. The first thing being a product feed. This is essentially a spreadsheet where you have all your product information in there, which can then be pulled into an ad. And this is managed by the Google Merchant Center. So you need to have an account there and connect your feed to this. I won't be going through these steps today as they're very different from how you would set that up. You could, for example, use a plugin depending on your shop system that would also differ. But in the end, you need to get to that spreadsheet kind of format where you have all your product information in there. That is actually the information that will later be used in your ads. And once you have that part in place, you would tag up your website. This is the important part where you would place a little bit of information on your website itself so that we can identify what product the user looked at at that given moment, send that over to Google Ads, and then Google Ads can pull the information from the product feed and put it all together into dynamic ads. How do these codes look like? Well, in the documentation of Google, we can see here that it wants informational pieces like the value of the products actually looked at at that given time, and the items that have been viewed. It's important to understand that the ID that you send over via the tracking code needs to be the same or match up to the product feed that you have uploaded to Google as well or to the Merchant Center. So in our case here, I have chosen to choose the variant ID. So this would be the ID that needs to be then matching up inside of my product feed as well. This might differ for your website, depending on how the product feed is created and which IDs are used to do this kind of remarketing. So how do you now get the different codes here onto your website? Well, there are different methods of doing so. One is to simply use a plugin, for example, on stores like Magento or Shopify or WooCommerce, you might have plugins that you can install to these systems and they will implement the code directly onto your website. But if there's no plugin available, you might need to install this manually on your website. Again, I won't be able to show you this today as this is developer territory. You would need to go into the documentation of Google and read through how to install these codes. When we are using Google Tag Manager, we would be pushing a data layer with information about the value of the products actually shown and then the IDs that are currently on the website. If you are a member of Measure Masters, you might know that we have data layer specifications for our members that we have prepared. So these are documents which let the member give over to their developers and they can go ahead and install all of these different codes that we have right here on this document. And then they don't have to go through all of the different cryptic documentation of Google. Again, this is available inside of our Measure Masters membership. Now, once you have these codes installed, you should actually check whether they have been implemented correctly because we actually need data about when somebody searched the product, item, the item list, when he viewed, for example, the category, the item view itself, then the add to cart, and then the purchase. And anytime one of these actions happens, we should have information in the data layer. So how can we make the data layer visible? When we're working with Google Tag Manager, let's just simply go over to our preview mode here. And first I need to publish an empty version. Then I should be able to connect. Let me get my page here. And so now we should be connected. And here we can see the data layer now in place. And we have a data layer push called view item. So the developer has implemented it correctly. It gives us the information about the value that 
is currently looked at the ID and that was the ID up here. And then the Google business vertical, which would be retail. This doesn't change because we are on a, a shop system here, but Google has different other verticals. If you want to check them out, there are different verticals that you might want to look into. Um, I can't find them right now. I think it's over here. So you have different business types from education, flights, hotels, rentals, jobs, and so on. So if you are one of these businesses, you might want to choose a different vertical there as well. So this seems to be implemented correctly, at least on this website. Let's go ahead and look actually on a catalog website with many different products here. And we get a view item list. And so here we have all the different items. The value is a summary or a sum of all of the products that we are seeing here. And let's go ahead and also search for something. And here we have the site search, view site search results. And uh, again, the value and all of these different numbers that are seen. And then the last bit would be to add this actually to cart. So I just added something to cart. We have an add to cart here. And in the data layer, we also have that information correctly transferred. And then the last step is the actual purchase of that product. So let me go through the checkout here really quickly. And here we go, we get to the thank you page. And on that thank you page, we also should have in the tag manager right here, the purchase with the event purchase and the value and then the items that have been bought. So this has been implemented correctly. And again, you need to have this data layer set up dynamically in order to make your implementation work. This is a prerequisite for the next steps to come. So how do we now take this information and send it on to Google ads? So first of all, we'll go over to our tags here. This is a brand new account and let's update this. And we'll simply go over to tags and here we're going to choose new. And as a tag configuration, we'll choose our Google ads remarketing tag. We'll give this all a name. And then we get a message already that the conversion linker tag is missing. This is a tag that you should definitely have installed. If you don't have it installed yet, I'm just going to click here on create. This is simply our Google ads conversion linker. You don't have to have any kind of special configurations here unless we have specialty here like cross domain tracking that we want to install. For now, I'm just going to go here on save. This will then be added to our tags as well. And the conversion linker is now available. Now we need our conversion ID and our conversion label. That's usually something we find inside of our Google ads account. So let's go over here and under the wrench icon, we should be able to go over to shared libraries and then audience manager. This is where we later will find our remarketing audience. And here we can go over to audience sources. And this is where we'll find our Google ads tag. If you don't have that set up yet, it will prompt you to set one up. We have one here already. And at the bottom, we'll find the tag setup. And here we can go for tag manager. And this is where we have our conversion ID. So this is what we would need. Let's go over back to Google tag manager, put our conversion ID in here. We don't have to have a conversion label. And now the next part would be to send remarketing event data. This is exactly what we want to do. So I'm going to click on this. We need to have the event name and the event name. These are predefined as well. You need to have view search results, view item list, view item, add to cart and purchase. Luckily we have these exactly inside of our data layer already. So we just need to pull in the event and there is a predefined variable here called event. So we click on that and this will pull in the event. Then the event value. Now the event value is something that is stored in the key value. So we would need to build a data layer variable in order to find this key and then pull out this value. So we can do this pretty easily by going into our account here and click on plus, and then we'll choose our data layer variable. 
and we are looking for the key value. Then let's give this also a name. This is a data layer variable for value. Save this. And then the event items. Now the event items should also be pulled into a data layer variable. And we have that variable in the data layer. So this is our items array. This needs to be pulled in. How would we do this? Again, same steps. We would simply go over and create a new variable, which is a data layer variable. So this is for items, DLV items. Let's save this. And we have correctly filled out our remarketing tag. We don't have to choose to any of the other configurations unless um, you want to. And then it comes to our trigger. So what trigger do we now attach to this tag? But we only want to fire this information to Google Ads when the information is actually available. And that means on the view item event, the view item list event, the site search event, the view item event, and the add to cart and the purchase event. So all of these need to be triggering our remarketing tag. You can find them here again. And we can use a little trick so we don't have to create new triggers all the time. So let's go ahead and create a new trigger here. This will be our remarketing events. This will be a custom trigger. We'll choose custom event and normally you would put in here, um, for example, purchase, and then it would fire on this purchase event that we have inside of the data layer. But since we have multiple events that we want to fire this on, we can go ahead and again, look at the list here. We could copy the list. Um, I have this already in this handy tool. And then we can choose to actually use regex matching here, which is a powerful um, option to just use the pipe to delimit a or function. So purchase or for example, add to cart. So all of these need to have a pipe and I have them already here. So let me just put a pipe in between the, those. And now we can use this list and put this into our event name. Let's save this. And this should be kind of it. We'll save the whole tag and I'm going to go again into the preview mode. Our debugger is connected and now we have a view item here already and our G adds remarketing tag fires with hopefully this information. We can click on the tag and we can see here the event items have been pulled in, the event value has been pulled in and the event name. Now to control this, we can use the tag assistant legacy right now still. Let's see if the data gets picked up. So we have Google tag manager here and why is it not showing our Google ads remarketing tag? Nope, it doesn't want to do it. Ah, we are not on a product page. So let me go over to a product page. So here we go. We have our Google ads remarketing tag, which is now installed. And if you click on it, we have our conversion ID. So this was recognized and then remarking validation, you can put in your product feed ID and then it can be matched and seen if the IDs actually match. We have a request down here. So here we can see all the data that was sent over uh, view item, the Google business vertical, and then the ID that was sent over. Now, if I go over to a page that actually shows multiple products, we should have another request here. And this time is a view item list retail and we have all of these different IDs. Same should be true for the search result. So let's see if the search results also pull in that right information. So here it seems to let's reload this one. Yeah, this time it worked. So we have view search results to retail and then all of uh, the different products that are currently seen. And also this should happen obviously when we click on add to cart and we have a view item, but we should also have a add to cart here as well. So this one worked and then we would go all the way through the checkout and to the purchase page. 
I trust that you have installed this now correctly and we don't have to do this. Ultimately though, once you have all your data implemented and sent over, you would see it also show up in your Google ads tag. So here we have all the parameters that were sent over. We have currency, we have Google business vertical and the ID and the event obviously, and the value as well. So this is information that now gets picked up by Google ads and you are ready to then start your campaign remarketing your different products dynamically with Google ads. Don't forget if you want to take this live to all of your users, so they actually send that information over, you would need to submit this as a version. So it goes live on your website. And this is how you install dynamic remarketing onto your shop via Google Tag Manager. All right, if you found this video helpful, I'd love for you to hit that thumbs up button so we get some algorithm love. And you should also definitely check out this video over there where I'm gonna show you how to set up Google Ads conversion tracking, which would be the next logical step because you want to control when somebody converts and you want to have that signal in your Google Ads account as well. So definitely check that out as well. Now, my name is Julian. Till next time.